Hello fellow tankers, this is Dauntless, and today I wanted to introduce you to a new series I'm starting called Last Stand. Now, this is a series that's also kind of like a map guide for those of you that aren't familiar with like my scouting guides and whatnot. And it's going to be a guide as to where to go when your team is actually stomped and where to fall back to. And, you know, even if you can't win, to try to maximize you know, your damage output for the rest of the game, whether you're trying to get your marks, whether you're trying to just get more experience and credits for that game so it's not a complete loss for you. Um, you know, there are strong positions on each side of every map that have a tactical advantage where you force them to play on your terms. A lot of the time players will just kind of give up on a flank, and even if they are in a quick enough vehicle to fall back when they realize that it's about to go down, um, they just sit there and they end up getting maybe one or two more shots in before they die, whereas they could have got five or six more shots in if they had fallen back. You know, it's easy to tell when a game is going to be a loss, and because of that, it's important to, you know, realize these situations, but then also knowing where to go is important. So again, hopefully this uh, guide that I'm making this video series will be helpful to you guys. That way you can actually get more out of each game. So the map I'm going to review today is Mountain Pass. Now Mountain Pass is actually pretty self-explanatory and that's why I chose to use it as a first map because I think a lot of you guys know how to play this map uh, quite defensively in situations like this where your entire team is just kind of scattered and they have the majority of their team pushing from one flank. As you can see here, a lot of their vehicles are pushing down the H and J line and it just doesn't look good. I was over there helping for a while. I decided to push down the, the hill down into where the IS-3 was, but then when I realized it was kind of hopeless, I decided to fall back. I could be sitting where the prototype is, but how long would a tank with no armor and 1000 HP last among those high tier vehicles and their 430 is a good player um, and it, again it's just a bad situation I already can tell they were going to lose this and so I am falling back to a position that I feel like is the best for defending and again a lot of you might think oh you're, you're a camper well yeah if I went here from the start of the game and didn't help my team I would be definitely be a camper but what I love about this position is that if they push too aggressively up to where that 140 is pushing you can get shots from here at things that are shooting into the middle, like the LTTB, the KR Patton. You know, right now, they're actually playing semi-smart, but if they were anywhere near where I was shooting, I would easily be able to take shots on them and maybe finish off a few things. Um, where this prototype is and this LTTB is pretty common for tanks to get aggressive and push forward and, again, get shots on those vehicles as well. Um, this tank has really bad gun depression, so I'm unable to really connect a lot of shots once they push close enough, but you can see our team is just completely unfolding and I'm just going to sit back and try to farm as much damage. I have 1500 damage, so I have had somewhat of a positive effect on our, you know, on this game, but <laughs> I want to get a lot more than that. If I'd stayed over there, I might have got one, maybe two more shots in, and I would have ended the game with probably around 2k damage. And, you know, I want to get a little more than that. So, I have fallen back. You know, I have I did kind of abandon the team, but again, this is kind of what the series is about. You know, it's not about winning for the team when you know beyond a shadow of a doubt you're going to lose this it's just going to be a no-go and you're in a low tier tank like this and you just want to maximize your damage this is a position for you so you know again this map is super easy to remember you just want to fall back to this hill when you know they're pushing around this corner to get into a position like this so you can uh, fire at them again it's a little bit easier when you have either armor or gun depression but you know this bad shot pushes around i'm able to put a nice shot into him and then when you're reloading you fall back and your arty if you have any can help you and it's just awesome because you know when you're when you fire they can't actually shoot you because you back off um, to the hill take a shot there I miss and this is important right here these bushes there's a rock right in the middle of them and this is what you use for cover because they're not gonna be able to get shots onto you as long as you hide behind this rock um, unfortunately I really wanted to finish off that AMX there it was really crucial that I did I was not able to and now I have more enemies this uh, already just backed himself and flipped himself, but I can't really worry about him right now. I got way too much to deal with. If I expose myself, I'm going to end up taking a hit for it. And so, kind of amusing him as bait, hoping that it, they'll maybe shoot him instead of me. But I end up taking another shot, which is really bad. But I am able to take out two of the enemy vehicles, actually three, um, including that bad chat that the Artie was able to finish off. Now there's one guy on cap. Um, I'm thinking about poking out and taking a shot, but then he gets unlit. And... I'm just going to wait and see, because they're guaranteed they're going to push up and try to kill me. This guy just won't be quiet, and so I decided to flip him. He's not going to be able to do anything, really, on a cliff like this. But I'm able to put a nice shot into the AP, and hopefully I can put one more in to finish him off. Now the Object 140 pushes around. He has to come around this corner. 
to shoot me, I'm able to put a nice clean shot into him. And again, you can just keep using this rock to keep them from coming at you. Uh, now, unfortunately, there's multiple enemies, and I should have backed off a little bit uh, because he was able to finish me off. But really, right there, in that situation, if you get to a position, because normally when tanks are outnumbering you like this. They come at you one by one depending on their speed. And so fast tanks like the Batshat will show up first and then over time, you know, tanks come at you one on one. And if it is towards the end of the game, a lot of them are gonna be very low health. This will allow you to farm them. If I was able to finish that AMX off with one shot, <laughs> it would have been awesome because instead of bouncing him, I would have been able to kill him and then I wouldn't have had to take a shot from him, reloaded quicker, quick enough to finish off that prototype and I would have still had most of my health here. I could have finished off this bat chat because I was fully reloaded and then I could have survived at least one or two more shots, finished off this patent, turn around and engage this M40, which, you know, maybe our artillery would have been able to finish him off too for me. And in that state where I'm in low health, I could have backed up around this corner. You can actually drive alongside this cliff here and force them to keep coming at you while you take time to reload. So anyway, that's how I would play the south base when you're falling back. You can see I netted myself uh, 3,100 damage, and it's actually pretty easy to rack up a lot of damage here uh, playing this hill. It's just important that you push back around this rock because if you're sitting on this side, you expose yourself to artillery fire. Alrighty, so before we jump into the north base, I just wanted to retouch about the south base a little bit because I forgot to mention that the south base is actually pretty good at holding off anything coming down the nine line as well. If you peek around this corner, there's a kind of a rock here you can peek around. Um, realistically though, you don't want to engage anything that's down here unless you have shots that at them as they're coming around the corner. But once they start looking at you, back off. Wait for them to come all the way up here, and then as they're coming through this area, you can shoot down on them uh, using the side of the hill to get you that extra gun depression if you can't. And most tanks don't have the elevation to contest them. And if you have even one ally coming here around the corner, forcing them to kind of get stopped, you can easily push around here and shoot down on them, which is awesome. So a little backstory for this replay here on the north. I was watching the bridge, hoping to catch things off guard, and then all of a sudden they were all spotted in the south and they just completely wiped everything that we had half our team down there and they just got wiped within a matter of minutes actually less than that and so i did what i good to hold them i only got one shot off um, in the middle here but i realized that the south is just completely gone and i need to relocate and again for warning i do <laughs> i i play very horribly in this replay but ultimately i am able to get a win and i do get very good damage by the end of it but I miss a lot of shots, and I and I shoot a lot of heat because I'm trying to go for the E100. Anyway, you'll see. So, I take a shot, and I, it's very important to realize that the second they come around the H1, G1 area, you already need to be in position because you want to get as many shots as possible. If you have even one ally back there spotting them for you, kind of hugging that rock that's down here, you know, just right around that corner, you know the rock I'm talking about. If you have one tank like an E100 or something holding behind that rock and they're coming around constantly, you can actually shoot them from up here as they do. And so this position is very, very powerful indeed. Now it's very important that you take it correctly. See this rock right here? You want to be in a position where you're basically driving straight into it because this will prevent you from being lit from anything right here in the center as well as being shot at anything from across that might be pushing across the middle. And you really don't want to be lit when you're in the, this position because you want to get as many shots as you can through these trees as they push across. Now I do have heat loaded again, like I said, because I was worried about this E100. I really want to take him out. Um, you know, our guys aren't going to have that much penetration to contest him. And because of that, I'm shooting down at his lower plate, meaning I won't be able to pen it. And I have to contest his turret armor or his upper plate, and I really need heat to do that. So because of that... I do have it loaded, and I keep it loaded because I don't know when he's going to give me a shot, and it really just messes with me. You know, the velocity is so much slower than the APCR rounds, and I'm not used to shooting heat out of this tank, and because of that, the, you know, the shot I take on the tortoise goes through his, hits his tracks and ends up doing no damage. But as you can see, this is kind of how you want to play it. You want to, you don't want to, the beautiful thing is you don't want to expose yourself to being shot from anything here so this is where this rock comes into play you want to play these two rocks effectively pull up to this rock to get shots down that way if you have anything pushing up to here you want to pull up to this rock that way these tanks here won't be able to engage you and you just want to kind of play back and forth you don't have to have superb gun depression to play this because once you drive up to the rock you'll have the gun depression to engage and, you know, realistically, when you're in a position like this, there are chances of tanks coming up the ice road and shooting you from behind. But because you're up on a hill, it is easy if the second they get lit, you can also drive off it. And 
this is another example of where the <laughs> uh, the velocity of the shells have trolled me. I'm just so used to putting it on and firing, but the velocity on these heat shells of this thing are just quite low compared to the standard uh, of the APCR rounds. And here, I don't know what happened, but I shot the ground. And again, I'm just failing all day long. If I was actually connecting all my shots, I would have had a lot of these vehicles dead by now. But I am able to connect with the T44-100 and finish them off. And as you can see, the Fosh is down there, and now we have them in the scissor. And these are the situations you want to be in. It's very, very annoying, as you know, to have a vehicle up here constantly putting shots down onto you. And you don't want to turn around because it takes so much time to shoot their little turret that they're giving you. And because of that, it's just very easy to farm damage up here and defend the base. Even in a situation like this where it seems hopeless, you can easily uh, you know, win and turn games around, especially if you have a few allies that are brawling with you. Now, as you can see, you can actually see all the way down the bridge from this position, which makes it extremely powerful compared to the other side. And I'm actually going to fast forward it just a little bit here to show you exactly what this position can do. Now when you're up here, the rock will kind of get in the way, so it's okay to, as long as this side is clear, you can drive uh, forward. And there you go, the AMX 50B is lit. And as long as you drive uh, forward towards the 50B up on this hill, as I'll show you right here, you can actually get more of a clear shot as long as you're not afraid of being shot from anything. So just drive just a little bit forward, you'll get the elevation you need, and you'll easily be able to get shot down onto them. And it'll prevent them from pushing again um, onto your base. And another thing you can do too from this side is protect the base from the ice road. Now it's not as effective, but it's definitely better than just sitting in the open. So when you see that the ice road is contested like this, all you have to do is drive and kind of hug the rocks and try to hold down behind these cliffs. They won't really expect you to just suddenly pop out from there usually. And because of that, you'll be able to shoot things and have just a hard, they'll have a hard time coming around this corner. So again, this spot is amazing because you can really defend all three aspects of this map from this one position as long as you have one or two competent players with you you'll be able to you know get some good damage and as you see i just raked in 2500 damage instead of just pushing down and getting myself killed after one or two shots i was able to farm a lot of damage and after this i go to kill the 50b i also killed the tvp at full life and i got around 5k damage total for this round which is a pretty good result considering i thought we were going to lose and i ended up getting a 5k win so again Positions like this, you know, some players know it, some players don't, but that's why I wanted to make this uh, replay or <laughs> this guide for the last stand. And, you know, some maps like this are pretty evident, and that's why I wanted to use this one as the first of the series to show you kind of an example of what I had planned. But as far as I know, every single map in the game has very, very strong defensive positions that give you a huge advantage over enemies that might be pushing on you. And because of that, I really want to show you guys that way you guys have a good understanding of how to just really maximize your potential damage per game um, and, you know, at least get more experience and damage you know, towards your marks and whatnot um, instead of getting frustrated and having uh, more losses. So anyway, hopefully you found this uh, the start of this new series um, helpful. If you did, I'd really appreciate your feedback down below as well as a like if you thought it was something that's worth um, your time as well as mine because it does take a little bit longer to create these. Um, if you do, again, give me your feedback on what you think um, and I'd really appreciate hearing what you have to um, say about it. So <laughs> anyway, guys, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, do so now for uh, more content like this in the future. As always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys later.